and coming soon to a moon base alpha near you, Starship Enterprise Edition. As SpaceX just completed Starship's sixth testing, and we see Starship matures with each test flight, it's clear that the moon is not nearly as far in the future as we might think. This is time for SpaceX Starship HLS to appear. Indeed, SpaceX just revealed a new Starship HLS design that will blow your mind. Unlike any other, this rendering will give the public a full look at this secret vehicle, both inside and out. Find out everything in today's episode. Congrats to SpaceX on Starship's sixth test flight. Exciting to see the Raptor engine restart in space. Major progress towards orbital flight. Starship's success is Artemis's success. Together, we will return humanity to the moon and set our sights on Mars. This is what NASA Administrator Bill Nelson tweeted on X after the Starship's latest flight test, hinting at a vital milestone in Flight 6, the Raptor engine restarts in space. By practicing and then mastering this ability, SpaceX can unlock the potential for complex in-space maneuvers. Approaching and docking with other spacecraft, making real-time orbital adjustments, and executing major trajectory changes. All essential steps for future interplanetary missions, including the Artemis Moon mission. In April 2021, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract to develop and manufacture the Starship HLS Lunar Lander for the Artemis program. When NASA selected SpaceX as the winner of the HLS contract, the company released a rendering of its lunar lander. At the time, the vehicle broadly resembled a standard Starship. It would stand 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide, albeit with its aerodynamic control flaps and heat shield tiles removed. The crew would have accessed the lunar surface via an elevator. The crew cabin would be in the payload bay, located on the upper half of the rocket, with the lower half holding its liquid oxygen and methane propellants. It would be powered by six Raptor engines, like its earthly twin, but would swap its fins used for atmospheric entry on Earth, useless in the lunar near vacuum, for landing legs. The payload bay has a volume of 1,000 cubic meters, and the rocket is advertised as being capable of carrying over 100 metric tons to the lunar surface. To do that, however, the vehicle must refuel several times in orbit. This requires a handful of tanker starships that would fill a fuel depot starship waiting in orbit, which would then refuel the HLS after its launch. Since then, each year the design of the starship HLS has changed gradually and significantly. The purported renderings of the Starship Human Landing System's new design, leaked last year, showed several fascinating modifications, including taller height, the addition of five large solar arrays, and small landing thrusters beneath its crew cabin. Fast forward to this year, the HLS renders continued to be updated and showed off to the public through a 3D model of the interior layout released by the Space Engineer team. According to the images and leaks from other contributors, including Tom Bickmore, who shared that he had been inside the nose cone, the crew quarters are divided into two primary decks. The main workspace and private quarters are located on the upper deck. At first glance, this area is quite spacious. In fact, it boasts an awe-inspiring 40-foot ceiling, giving astronauts an open, spacious area to adjust to the moon's lower gravity before stepping onto the surface. This expansive space is not only visually captivating, but also serves as a training environment where astronauts can familiarize themselves with the unique conditions they'll face on the lunar landscape. The inside amenities meet the basic requirements with five bedrooms for astronauts, arranged with a layout inspired by the ISS, but with a horizontal orientation to offer a more familiar living and working environment. With a clever domino layout, SpaceX can even expand each ship ring to accommodate up to 20 bedrooms, showcasing the Starship HLS's impressive capacity for a large astronaut crew. To make this area more interesting, other parts are also added including four seats in the central control room, which is similar to those in the Crew Dragon, complete with a touchscreen to oversee and control the entire system. 
Besides the standard control screens, large wall displays will serve as virtual windows, promising astronauts an unparalleled visual experience. Details you may notice as significant are the life support outlet, storage rack, shoe cover storage, and system switchboard. There's also an emergency exit for added safety. Going down the lower deck through a functional 15-step staircase, we will see a smaller and less interesting place housing life support equipment, specifically the Environmental Control and Life Support System, ECLSS, and will include critical components like the heat exchange system. This area is also likely to store research gear, lunar rovers, and supplies such as food and water. Although not yet confirmed, it's expected that the lower deck will also house the restroom facilities. Due to not being the main habitant, the deck's floor is not flat and has a curved design instead, shaped by the pressure vessel dome, but it will be optimized to ensure smooth movement for the crew. Of course, this is not the first time this year that Starship HLS renderings have been unveiled. Interestingly, during the Flight 4 countdown at T plus 14 minutes and 49 seconds, the images inside the airlock of Starship HLS were leaked and blew SpaceX's enthusiasts' minds. The airlock is a compartment that permits passage between environments of differing atmospheric pressure or composition, while minimizing the mixing of environments or changes in pressure in the adjoining spaces. There goes that job. This mock-up was utilized for the pre-launch tests under NASA's Artemis III. Thus, as you can see, its interior is pretty pristine and temporary, especially this door. Of course, in a real test, we will need something more robust. Like the majority of SpaceX's other products, the Lunar Lander's interior stands out with its main white color tone and the luxurious but simple design. The wall, besides that, looks like the white sofa pads, creating a soft interaction between the wall and spacesuits. This wall to the side here probably possesses pressurization and hardware equipment to simulate the real in the most authentic way. Oh my God, look at this. This picture is so amazing, and the board of control panel below is no less impressive. Close up of the lower right portion of the screen, the buttons around the red border caught our eyes. They are important functions and were tested on April 30th, when NASA astronaut Doug Wheels Wheelock and Axiom Space astronaut Peggy Whitson practiced interacting with a control panel in the airlock, ensuring controls could be reached and activated while the astronauts were wearing gloves. Those buttons also contain the standard push to talk and the standard plugins we have seen before for microphones. It's about the interior, so how about the exterior? Okay, let's take a look at the 2023 rendering with some notable changes compared to the initial one. First of all, it's about the size. Active Starship prototypes stand 50 meters tall. The same was true of the initial HLS design, but the new design of the lander version gets taller than that, about 55 meters, while remaining the same nine meter wide. As early as December of 2021, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said that future Starships, or at least certain Starship variants, were being upgraded with more Raptor engines and stretched propellant tanks. This rendering provides confirmation that this enhancement is still part of SpaceX's plans. By stretching Starship's propellant tanks, SpaceX will be able to load more fuel into the lander, thus enhancing Starship's performance for lunar missions. This is very important especially since HLS Starship must loiter in orbit around the moon for up to 100 days while it waits for its crew to arrive. Larger propellant tanks would allow it to carry enough liquid methane and liquid oxygen to land, despite the loss of propellant through boil off to space. Next up is the paint, with the main color being white. But the new renderings reveal that its engine section is painted black. While white surfaces reflect nearly 100% of incoming solar radiation, which reduces the rate at which propellant boils off, black surfaces absorb the bulk of incoming solar radiation, which might help keep Starship's six Raptor engines warm in the frigid lunar shadows. The most obvious additions to the Starship lunar lander 
are its five large solar arrays that serve as the lander's primary source of energy in space and on the lunar surface. This presence of some sort of solar arrays is also mentioned in a recent paper, namely NASA's Human Landing System, a sustaining presence on the moon. In this publication, the HLS team stated, SpaceX has conducted development testing and analyses on crew displays, crew elevator, hot gas reaction control system, solar array deployment, thermal and micrometeoroid debris protection tiles, landing legs, docking mechanisms, landing software and sensors, and medical systems. The new renderings also confirm that Starship HLS will be equipped with some form of small thruster beneath its crew cabin. Normally, the majority of Artemis III's powered landing would be performed by Raptor engines. However, these powerful Raptor engines would likely generate severe plume surface interactions during landing, excavating large quantities of rock and regolith from beneath the lander. Instead, a soft landing with smaller thrusters would be a better option, especially in the context of Elon's vision of a reusable vehicle for interplanetary travel. In addition to small landing thrusters, soft landings are also assisted by landing gears. Beyond minor changes in deployment angle and spacing, Starship's four landing legs appear to be relatively unchanged. However, they are no longer housed inside enclosed aerodynamic fairings, but appear to be retracted and flush against the lander's body during launch. This change stems from the belief of both SpaceX and NASA in the durability of the landing gear against the high winds that blow past the rocket at hundreds of miles per hour as it ascends through the atmosphere. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.